So thank you. I want to welcome all the listeners here to our inaugural episode of Sweet Spots. That's Ontario Sweet Spots powered by Property Pathways. Today we have an amazing guest that we're going to be talking about site selection, small scale real estate development, and some other initiatives that he's launching right now. So without further ado, I do want to welcome Matt Fedrick to our podcast. So Matt, Thank you so much for having us. Um, how's your day been so far? Ronald, my day's been amazing <laughs> and I'm very happy to be here today. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. So I know the commute might have been a little bit challenging. We're, we're sort of midtown here, uh, maybe on the outskirts a little bit, but I mean, it's still a very much, um, you got to get to Toronto here, right? And it takes some time. But, you know, I kind of want to jump into because you do a lot of stuff with real estate developers and you really help train a lot of new real estate developers, but you've also done a whole lot. And I think a lot of people know a lot about what you have been uh, doing throughout your career here as a real estate developer and investor. But I, I have some really cool questions that I want to run by you. So hopefully, let's see if we can get some more out of your background, because I know you're, you're, you're an introvert, except when you're presenting, right? So um, we're going to go dive directly into what I'm calling the fireside questions or conversations, all right? So I have a few questions for you. Sounds good. Let's hopefully talk a little bit about how it is you got into what you're doing. So if you were to give advice to your younger self, what would that be and why? Well, you know what I would say? I would say to myself, spend time with people who are at the next level. Mm -hmm. So for instance, let's say I'm in grade 10, I'm playing grade 10 basketball. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I might be good, but I should spend some time in the NBA. I'll be terrible, but the fact is I'm spending time with people mm. who move faster, think faster, mm -hmm. have a high responsibility. That's right. And that tends to uh, force you to be better. Then when you come back to grade 10, mm. all of a sudden you're better. So I always say to myself, find people in my circle who are uh, equal, but find people who are even older, more experienced, and I always created, from the beginning, a personal board of director. In other words, not a board of director for a company, mm -hmm. but I've always found four people that will keep me in check, people I can, people I can talk to. That's right. And ultimately uh, run things by, people who have been through what I, I have done, yeah. uh, where I want to be, and doing what I want to be. Wow. Yeah, so it's been very important for me. Well, that's, a, that's great advice for your younger self, for sure. I, I certainly get that. You know, you want to spend at least... You know, I think I heard somewhere that you want to spend at least 20 or 30% of your time with people that are more advanced than yourself. I kind of like you want to hang out with the coaches, That's right? right? And, exactly. and learn as much as you can. So when you get back down to a lower level, you can then be a coach, right? Exactly. That's, 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 that's great advice, man, for your younger self. So your younger self would be at an advantage. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, here's one. We got another one. Another interesting question here. So what is the most pivotal experience in your past that contributed to where you are today? Well, I have to say that uh, I came to Canada in 1972 mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I lived in uh, Hamilton, mm -hmm. which is a really good city, but I was different. Yeah. Uh, I was different than most people because I look different in yeah. the sense that, uh, you know, my, my skin color was different. Yeah. Now, okay. we, we all have our own situations, right? Yeah, but back in the day... Uh, because I was different, you know, I, I would go into a pool mm -hmm. and the parents would say to the kids, come out of the pool. Mm. And I would watch this and I'm thinking, you know, you think parents would be more responsible. Yeah. So it, it kind of hurt me, uh, sort of made me feel second class. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, a few things of that happened to me. But you know what it did? It caused me to say to myself, you know mm -hmm. what? I need to prove to somebody or something mm -hmm. that I'm better than that. That's right. Now, so important that that happened to me. Yeah. Because if it didn't, if I was very popular in the grades, in the gr lower grades, if I was very popular in high school, I would yeah. not have had the opportunity to sit and watch people, mm -hmm. listen, learn, and mm. have the desire to at least have my first property by 19, because I wanted to prove to people that I was equal. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what I found? Uh, That's right. It was really only about 10% of the people out there mm -hmm. who gave me a hard time in that area. That's right. But as a kid, I saw it as 80%. <laughs> the truth is, <laughs> mm -hmm. a lot of people who don't even look like me That's helped right. me right. and uh, were my, my best support. Wow. But the fact is, I didn't wow. see that until later on. Wow. Uh, wow. But it was very important to, to drive me to be better than what I was. So it was a blessing in disguise. And again, we all mm -hmm. have a, a different situation. 
you yeah. know, person, you might That's be great. the best looking young gentleman in class, mm -hmm. but he goes home and his dad uh, is an alcoholic and beats him. Yeah. So everybody has something. Wow, you know? wow. So it's important to understand that too. Well, I, I got to tell you, that's that's great. And I think a, a lot of a lot of immigrants to this country yeah. can say have similar experiences, you know, yeah. but I oftentimes think a lot of that might be an exaggeration just yeah. because we, you know, we, we are coming from a different exactly. background. But with that said, you know, sometimes we also focus, we put so much attention on this little 10%, as you're calling that's it, right. and make it a mountain. Exactly. Whereas it really shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have been. That's right, yeah. But you know what? It, it contributed. It, it did contribute to, to my success, but That's it correct, shouldn't yeah. have been a mountain because it was not a mountain. That's right. You okay, know? good. You know, hey, that, I don't think I've ever heard that, but that's that's yeah. actually really, that's yeah. phenomenal advice. And again, I, I, I like to learn a little bit more about who you are as a person because, yeah. you know, we have had some conversations you yeah. know, over the phone, but man, this is, this is great stuff. Yeah. So one more question in our fireside chat here. And uh, you know, what aspect of your life impacted mm -hmm. your decision to do what you do today as a real estate developer, right? Well, you know, I bought my first house at 19. I wanted that property because I just wanted to prove again mm -hmm. that I was not second, I was first. Yeah. But I didn't plan to be an investor. I just mm -hmm. wanted to have a house. Yeah. I actually rented the basement, shared the kitchen. I lived in the main floor. So today mm -hmm. you'll call that house hacking. Yeah. But my brother, about four years later, he's mm -hmm. a police officer. Uh, he came to me and said to me, I want you to invest in real estate. And I says, I'm not doing that mm -hmm. because I'm a teacher. That's what I do. I teach. Yeah. And he says, no, I'm your older brother. I have a gun. You're going to invest. And because I was a systems guy, he, yeah. wanted, he wanted me to bring my systems to the table because he mm -hmm. was more of a visionary. Mm -hmm. I was more of a systems guy. Mm -hmm. So he literally pulled me into investing. I didn't want to be an investor. He mm -hmm. pulled me into okay, it. Good. And uh, it was important because then that I began to see the world differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was my, my older brother who made the choice for me. Oh, wow, you know? that's fantastic. Yeah. So he essentially created an environment exactly. that you now can basically blossom in. Exactly. And uh, and clearly, yeah, you know, he's probably, yeah. his older brother, he said. Older brother, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. right now, where is he right now? So you know what, he's semi-retired, he lives in Belize. Okay, and okay. And we actually build in Belize. So about six years ago, he oh, retired, wow. went down there. And uh, again, we, we, we build um, s speculation houses or, or we build houses for yeah. um, people who want like a luxury house. Yeah, well, as well, I know Billy's has a real market for that, yeah, right? That small country, yes. but um, beautiful beaches. Beautiful beaches. Yeah, <laughs> but what I like about it, it's yeah. a British common law when it yeah. comes to ownership of the property. Yeah, and everything is in English, and I read English. It's important yeah. for me to understand my contracts. Well, hey, so. well, hey, great. I mean, that's our fireside. That's kind of the end of our fireside yeah. segment here. <laughs> but I mean, that's really segues into mm -hmm. what is we going to be talking about here, yeah. which is small scale real estate development. Yes. How do you like select a site? Like what are some of the factors that you would take into account mm -hmm. when you're looking at a site? So, I mean, I'm really at the beginning, like, you know, I'm at the beginning of this whole journey. Right. What, what are some of the things that I should be looking for in a site if I'm planning a small scale real estate development? So what I do, I um, yeah. just before I find the site, yeah. I talk to the city to see what they need. Mm -hmm. So I might talk to a counselor, let's say a ward one or ward two counselor. I want to find out what the city is looking for. Mm. Are they looking for mm -hmm. density? Are they looking for, you know, uh, you know, low cost? Like, what are they actually looking for? What does the city need? That's interesting. And when I understand what they need, mm -hmm. understand what capacity they need it in, yeah. then that's going to help me to determine what am I going to do there? Am I going to do a subdivision of townhouses? Am that's I going right. to do semi-detached? Mm -hmm. Am I going to do, you know, three, four story, uh, you know, 50 unit condo buildings? Mm -hmm. It all depends on what they need. Now, That's when great. I know what they need, then I know what to look for. Because That's if right. I understand the size and capacity, mm -hmm. then I start looking. And I generally just go to Google Earth to start off with. Yeah, of course. And I just look for pieces of land. Yeah. And then what I do, um, I look, when I find that land, obviously I speak to the owner. Mm -hmm. But if I'm looking at the piece of land, there are mm -hmm. considerations that I may have to do. Like, yeah. for instance, if it's a, a piece of farmland, I'm looking to see right next to it, does the farm next to it, uh, you know, are there pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, algicides, even uh, antibiotics mm -hmm. in the in the farm animals? Is there some kind of a stream or a river mm. coming from that property wow. to wow. my property? Do, is there That's a, very smart. That's very is smart. There a, yeah. Is there a railway going by my land? Because now I have to mm -hmm. deal with with, with, with with the rail. And there's okay. setbacks for rail. Okay. And there's also pollution on the rail lines. Mm -hmm. I might be close to a factory. If that's the case, then yeah. I have my environmental concerns with that factory. Mm. If there's a small river running through it, 
well, I don't know if I have to do something called a record of sight condition because I don't know if it affects salamanders or birds or, wow. you know, so that's an, an environmental issue. Oh my goodness, yes, And then yes. I have to deal with, um, well, are there some trees there that are endangered trees? Mm -hmm. Can I cut those down? Yeah. How close is the power to that piece of land? Do I have to bring in infrastructure, you know, gas mm -hmm. and electrical mm -hmm. and servicing. water and wow. servicing? Yeah, That's a lot yeah. of money. Okay. And again, so those are a few of the things that I'm thinking. I might be side a highway because you have to make sure you're so many feet away from that, mm -hmm. and then there's a different ministry you're dealing with. Wow. So that's what I generally look at when I look at a piece of land. <clears throat> I, I got to tell you, I mean, so. that's a lot. That You just broke down, like, that's a snapshot. That's a huge, yeah. that's a bird's eye view yeah. of everything that you need to basically consider when you're, when you're selecting a site. Yes. I, I want to kind of drill in a little bit on sure. some of those some of those topics there. Sure. So you did mention about sort of working with the city. Mm -hmm. How important is that on a scale of one to 10 and, and why? Working with the city, uh, the, the, I would say the high level officials to make sure that things work. How important is that and why? Well, from one to 10, I think it's 10. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people, yeah. <clears throat> when they be begin to develop, mm -hmm. they, their ego is not super high. Yeah. But once they start building, the ego grows a bit. Yeah. And it's not about what they need, it's about what I need. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you how things should go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how you should do your job. Okay. And they use a lot of their knowledge too. The problem with your knowledge is sometimes the people in the city may be in, they may feel intimidated yeah. by that knowledge. Mm -hmm. It may cause them to not act as fast. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I, I need to understand how things work. Like which departments are slower, and which departments are faster. Okay. I, and yeah. therefore, I can compensate by just making sure, because I create that relationship, yeah. and I'm able to talk to each person. Mm -hmm. I'm able to just have a, a friendly reminder mm -hmm. that uh, did that information go from point A to point B? Mm -hmm. Because 70% of most delays, yeah. if you do your work right, yes. if you didn't give any blanks, 70% 70 70 of most delays come from a department to department, not sending information back and forth, not in a timely way, mm -hmm. not understanding exactly what uh, yeah. department A or department B once. So Absolutely. we have to facilitate that, I believe. Wow. So it's really important to understand that. Well, I completely agree with you. Yeah. You know, I haven't worked with a number of clients on design work, yeah. doing some small scale type of <clears throat> developments. I understand how the city works. And I, I agree with you. Yeah. Some departments do work slower than others. <laughs> and for example, like, you know, you, you know, I, I will touch a little bit on this, but yeah. definitely you want to make sure that all your zoning requirements are, are kind of a kind of knocked off and everyone is already in agreement with what it is exactly. you're actually trying to do or else that can create a lot of backlog and just hold up people kind of thinking what's going on here so i like that approach yeah. you know and i think maybe i can take a take a couple of tools out of your toolbox there and just <laughs> make sure that i'm reaching out to the city in advance mm -hmm. to make sure because even though you know as you said yeah. sometimes people can be a little bit reluctant you know, yeah. to, to, to treat you that way. Yeah. Uh, and they may, they may be a little bit offended in some cases, right? Yeah. To, for lack of a better word. But yeah, and also too, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people go number one, number two, number three, yeah. the sequence. Yeah. Sometimes the correct sequence is not mm -hmm. the right sequence. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I go that's to the right. counselor to see what's in the area. Yeah. I go to, let's say the conservation authority. Yes. yes. I talk to them first mm -hmm. to get a good understanding of what they need. Yeah. So when they actually get my, my paperwork on their table, mm -hmm. it's not cold. That's right. They've seen it before. Oh, got you. And I respected them. Mm -hmm. And it, although the uh, conservation authority serves at the pleasure of the city, mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't feel that way. Yeah. So yeah. ultimately, it's knowing who to talk to first, second, or third, not always in the right sequence. Yeah. And a lot of it is, guess what? Life imitates high school. <laughs> and, I, you know, I, I couldn't have said it better. Yeah. And I actually agree with you. Yeah. You know, this is kind of like the first phase, yeah. right, of, of, of going through this process. And you kind of give us a bird's eye view yeah. of all the different aspects of it. And you did just mention about conservation. Yeah. You know, my experience with conservation is that you don't want to mess with these guys. No. They're worse than the mafia, right? right. Like they will <laughs> shut things down and put That's you right. out of business. Exactly. Right? So you want to make sure that you're selecting sites like that, that comply or are yeah. not within any type of environmentally sensitive area. That's right. So wh what are some of the tools and how do you go about doing that? Like for, from, from a selection standpoint? Well, it's very important to, to do two things. Number one, mm -hmm. You know, I try to circle myself with people who are in the industry. Yeah. So, and, and this sounds maybe not genuine, mm -hmm. but I do make it genuine. Mm -hmm. I try to find people who are uh, environmentalists. Yeah. Or I, I find people who are BCINs. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. architects. I find people who are in, in different specialized, specialized areas, areas mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the business yeah. that I want to be in. Okay. I become friends with them. Building the right team. But I become friends with mm -hmm. them, not to do business with them. 
mm. to have a prototype to understand them. Yeah, now, everybody's yeah. unique, but if I have a good friend who is working for, let's say, Peter McCallum, yeah, uh, you know, environmental. Got you. And I'm not actually doing business with them, let's say. Yeah, but okay. My friend is someone I can talk to, mm -hmm. uh, have lunch with, get to understand and know, play mm -hmm. racquetball with, get to know that person. Yeah. Now I'm getting to know the culture and the understanding mm. of how somebody in the environmental world thinks. Okay. So that person is my prototype. Okay. And then I may do business with them, but I'll do business with other people mm -hmm. knowing that I, I understand how they think. Got you. I have uh, people who work in the city mm -hmm. who are bylaw officers. Yeah. I actually know them. Yeah. And we're friends with them. It yes. may not even be the city that I'm doing business in. That's correct. But you have to have people as friends that mm -hmm. you spend time with wow. to understand. Wow. You know, it's funny. A lot of police officers are great people. My mm -hmm. brother was a police officer. Yeah. But a lot of police officers spend a lot of time with police officers. That's right. They don't get a chance to spend time with everybody else. Community. Yeah. Well, guess what? That it's the same them. thing Got with you. this. Got you. So it may be, I know everybody in one city. Mm -hmm. And I may not be doing business in that city. Mm -hmm. But at least I have prototypes of each person. So when somebody's talking to me. I understand what they're saying because my yes. friend has helped me to be aware of the concerns of an environmentalist. It's a very long answer, but wow. hopefully no, that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know what? I absolutely, you know, this is the thing that I try to tell all my clients yeah. and I try to even share with other with other real estate investors. Yeah. You got to know the glossaries. That's right. right. The glossary is important because someone right. like, listen, I, I couldn't, if I were to go into a doctor's office, right. like, you know, they do surgery. I wouldn't know all the tools or right. the words that they're using. I wouldn't know what they're operating on. Exactly. Right? Of course, maybe if they're opening me, I might be <laughs> asleep, right? But with that said, um, what I'll say is like, this is really important to understand the glossary of terms yes. that the professionals are using around you. Yes. So at least you don't have to be the expert at it, but you at least need to follow the conversation. That's right. right? And I like the second point you make there about just really this real estate development business is a business of relationships, right? Yes. Like basically knowing all the people and all the parts and knowing who to talk to when certain things come up. So I very agree. important. I agree. And mm -hmm. then understanding somebody's fears, yeah. anxieties, mm -hmm. doubts, yeah. how they see the world. Yeah. So yeah. when I'm talking to anybody in that field, mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. And they know I get it. Wow. And all of a sudden I get to the front of the line mm -hmm. without having to try to get there. Yes. Because yes. I know people just like them. Mm -hmm. And yes. that's, that's called respect. That's correct. And it also means my ego is not big enough to think it's not about it's not about you, it's about me. That's correct. I've taken yeah. time to learn mm -hmm. you, yes, walk in right. your shoes. That's correct. And now I respect you that way. Sometimes we forget yeah. that building officials are also people. They're people too. They're also people, right? Yeah. So, you know, that's great. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of, I want to kind of fast forward here because we can talk all oh, day yeah, yeah. about these or these, these, uh, these sort of yeah. building officials and this yeah. whole process, these sort of political process about it, yeah. the regulatory process, which yeah. is the zoning and working with the different, you know, bodies, they are having authorities and so yeah. forth. But I want to kind of drill in a little more to the actual investor. So okay. the real estate investor. Like, so I'm planning a small scale development. And right. this, this is kind of setting up for some future questions as well. But I'm a small scale, I'm planning to get into small scale development, right. maybe row houses, raw land, right. maybe brown fields and so forth. Yeah. So what, is, what are some of the skills that you think is critical for a new real estate investor success in this business? What would you say? Well, I mean, raising money is number one. Yeah. Because if I can raise money for projects, mm -hmm. but I don't know how to do a project, yeah. I can still be successful. Yeah. Secondly, if I can raise money, but I can do uh, site, like site selection, yeah. knowing the right kind of site, yes, right, and understanding right. what can go there, mm -hmm. then I can still be successful. Successful meaning I can take care of my family. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, number three would be if I can actually do the site plan approval process. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of builders can't do that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They don't know how to do it. They don't have the patience for it. They don't have the finesse. Mm -hmm. They use a broad sword as opposed to a rapier mm. when you're dealing with some of these uh, finance things. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, things that are a little bit, uh, you know, let's say uh, things that you need to, to be careful about, right? Yeah, absolutely. Sensitive. Yeah. Sensitive. Surgical. Yeah. Surgical. Yeah. Surgical. Yeah. Surgical. There's <laughs> the right. word. There's the word. Yeah. yeah. So, so ultimately, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that's, that's the important part, right? Yes, yes. But when it comes to financing and raising money, you mm -hmm. have to understand people. Mm -hmm. And you have to make a choice. Do I want to raise money from people who are putting $50,000 on the table mm -hmm. or people who are pay, putting down half a million or a million? Mm -hmm. You definitely want to work with people who are putting down the million dollars on the table. Mm -hmm. That means you have less mouths to feed, okay. less people to answer to. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you have to ask yourself, are they going to stay for the whole game or are they just going to help me buy the land, 
mm -hmm. get to site plan approval shovel ready. Wow. Because keep in mind that when I buy the land, if I want to mm -hmm. go to the bank, yeah. I'm at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. I need them. Mm -hmm. uh, if I get site plan approved, now I know what I can build. I That's can right. tell the bank exactly when it will be built. That's right. Then I can tell investors exactly when it can be built. Mm -hmm. Now I'm at the top of the hill. So mm -hmm. I like to get to the position of strength. And then the people who help me come in to do that, I may then refinance the property at its higher value now mm. and then get them out. Get them out, yeah. And then mm -hmm. now bring in the bank or bring in investors who need to see that. I can see that you get that done in a year or two. Yeah. Because we're shovel ready. That's right. That's right. You know, so it's an understanding of that mix. So raising money, number Ra one. Raising money is number one. Number two is understanding this the zoning process. I just said in the zoning process, having yeah. a good friend who's a BCIN. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, yes, that's like, right. like you. <laughs> So I could just call and say, yeah. you know, what, what do you think about this site, <laughs> yeah. right? And of course, I have to respect you. Yeah, of course. I, I can't yeah. just keep calling you, mm -hmm. and you know, I have to respect your time, right? That's right. That's right. It's, it's yeah. important to respect people, mm -hmm. and then I, I get a good scope because mm -hmm. you're excellent at, at looking at what's possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I have to make a decision that you know what, although I like it, mm -hmm. and it fell on my lap, yeah, doesn't mean I have to do it. That's right. That's right. I can walk away from it. Okay. Right. And number three would be just going through the regulatory That's process right. of getting site plan approval and exactly. so forth. As you say, I never, what's it, a rapier you said? A, a rapier. It's a rapier is like one of those like fin, fencing type of swords. Fencing. Sword. It's yeah, fencing. Okay, yeah. cool. Fin yeah. sword. You place it. I should you have know, one of those on, at my office right now, you know, yeah. because <laughs> I think constantly I'm using this tool because, yeah. you know, really and truly it's very surgical. It's like, yeah. it's very, very specific, very surgical. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I think all this is really great yeah. for a new real estate investor to understand because you know this is this is a, is a long game as well it's a long right? game it's a long game uh development is not a renovation no it's not right? a renovation uh, we, you're easily setting aside at least two years of your life right it's and probably years, yes. a ton of money yes. just to kind of That's make right. to make this whole thing work right? right so i absolutely agree with that now what advice would you give someone starting out in real estate development in terms of risk tolerance maybe timelines, like what, what type of advice would you give them concerning that? And and maybe I'll, I'll even ask a second phase to that is like, do you think everyone is actually cut out for small scale real estate development? Yeah. Well, I'll answer that first. Yeah. The answer is no. <laughs> Some people should run. No. <laughs> run, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, but, but what I did, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. my brother and I actually bought uh, a few townhouses yeah. that were being built by a builder, mm -hmm. and we were able to um, have the ability to come on site. Yeah. So we actually watched them build it mm. at, at each of the key phases, and okay. those key phases would That's be inspection phases. Yeah. So you know, all of a sudden, uh, the pre-foundation, mm -hmm. the pre-footing, the post-footing, right. foundation, uh, you know, rough, rough in. Mm -hmm. So at all the key inspections, we showed up, okay. and we were able to look and see it. So wow. we watched it for a while. Wow. Then we actually had our own houses built. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do this, but that's what we did. Yeah. And then we actually had some chance to make modifications to existing plans. Wow. And therefore we watched those being built yeah. and we felt pretty good about that. Mm -hmm. then, then we moved to a, a whole different realm. Okay. So look at what I did. I couldn't find anybody here in Ontario to teach me the ropes because families keep things tight. That's right. Secrets. That's correct. And construction, I did, yes. I did find a, pro a company in Alberta. I was pulling title. Yeah. And all their projects at Land Title Land Registry. Okay, got you. And I found out that uh, this company. This is this investigative work that you took upon yourself. Investigating, yeah, because I couldn't wow. find anybody here to, to help me with this. Wow, that's impressive. But I, I was going across the country just looking. Yeah. Right? I just happened to be dating somebody in Alberta. Yeah. So okay, when I went to see her, bonus, yeah. I was able to <laughs> check out real estate, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, I went to see her, mm -hmm. not the real estate. Yeah, okay, got you. Yeah, bonus, so right? make sure you got to choose, right? Yeah, yeah, you got to choose, right? Yeah. Bonus, right? <laughs> yeah. And I found this one company, uh, yeah. a few doctors kept supporting this uh, this uh, firm. Yeah. And I called them and said to them, listen, I was back in Ontario. I said, mm -hmm. listen, I can come out there and show you guys how to raise money, not just from that little small group. I can show you how to raise money from other people because you're buying one piece of land. They're funding you. Mm -hmm. You're getting it to shovel ready. You're refinancing it. You're paying mm -hmm. them out and you're buying your second piece of land. Yeah. Why don't I help you raise money to get a few pieces under control mm -hmm. so that you can actually do more than one thing? Mm -hmm. And they said to me, don't come out. We're not interested. Mm -hmm. And that was a Thursday. And by the Tuesday, I jumped on a plane. I was living in Ancaster, went to WestJet, jumped on a plane back in 2007. Mm -hmm. I flew out there and said, I just flew three and a half hours to come and see you. Mm -hmm. And I will have an hour of your time. Wow. And they're like, you just flew three and a half hours? Wow. Oh, I, I just flew three and a half hours. Yeah. So they gave me an hour, which became five hours. That's and ultimately, <laughs> uh, I said to them, I need for you to show me your mm -hmm. structure. Yeah. I want to 
live your culture. Yeah. I'm going to come out here 15 days a month and uh, you'll pay me mm -hmm. for that. And once I learn what you guys do, then I'll begin to raise money for you. So that's how I began to learn the business. Wow. By giving them what they needed mm -hmm. and they gave me what I needed. Whoa. So that was really important. I got a few <laughs> interesting comments to make on that. I actually think Jim Rune said that. Give enough people what they want and you will get what you want. Yes. Exactly. Right? Like, so that's that's the one. But I think I heard a similar story like that. I read it actually in um, Think and Grow Rich. Like this book, Think, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. So it was like this, uh, I, I, I can't, this is not verbatim, right? Yeah, yeah. But very similar. Like there's this guy who saw Thomas Edison. Yeah. He actually um, made this device, this teleprompter or something like that. Right. And this guy thought that he would drive out to wherever Thomas Edison was on the whim, right? right? And just go tell him like he is gonna he's gonna go into business with Thomas Edison yes. to sell this device. Yes. Entrepreneur, right? And that's essentially what you exhibited there, well, right? That, if you look at the, the car industry, the yeah. airplane industry, yeah. all these industries always have somebody who understands that fortune favors the bold. Oh wow. And that's therefore, amazing. And therefore they go out there mm -hmm. and they're bold about it. Mm -hmm. And uh things happen. Well yeah, there is failure. You hit, a, you hit a wall sometimes. Oh, we can talk about that. But, that's but, a whole episode in yeah. itself. <laughs> but I don't want to get to 96 thinking I should have. <laughs> yeah. And that's right. You know, you know yeah. regret is more painful than the pain you would go through in exactly. doing the thing than the fear to face, right? Exactly. Um, but you said something, and I think like this is the most critical part, I think, to any real estate investor. Yeah. Raising money, as you mentioned, is the first thing. Yeah. So, like... How did you learn to raise money? Like it seems like you this was a skill that you developed. I like I, I I'm I'm like I'm very curious. How did you learn to raise money in the in the efficiency that you do today? Well, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Um what I did was I decided to choose a certain type of person. Mm -hmm. Like choose a um a, a, a character, mm -hmm. a character. -ter, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um so I said to myself, I'm I'm gonna find somebody who is maybe female who is 45 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, her young adult just moved back home. Mm -hmm. Maybe her mom or dad has early onset dementia. Yeah. Uh, she is uh, maybe experiencing a divorce. Uh, she's upper management. Mm -hmm. If she were to leave her position, probably not get a position again. Mm -hmm. um, she is uh, tired. Mm -hmm. And she wants to know that there's something there for her in the future. Mm -hmm. But she's busy doing her high level job. Yeah. So what I can do is say to her, listen, I want to wow. make you realize that what we're doing is secure. Mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Here are all the problems that can happen. Yeah. And we're not going to go grandiose, but if you can put your money here and we, we can have success in three years, not mm -hmm. five years, but three years, because that's the horizon, Yeah. then we can do it again for the next three years, again for the next three years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once you reach 55 or 65, mm -hmm. we have done this about four or five times. Mm -hmm. We can build up a nice nest egg for you. Okay, got you. And enough for you to then write the next chapter of your life. Because mm -hmm. a lot of females, when they hit about 60 and 70 and 80, they mm -hmm. want to write a new chapter every every year. Every, every year. Uh, sometimes guys stop every, writing chapters decade, at, maybe. at 55, right? <laughs> They're like know? retired at 55. So yeah. that's one example. Or okay, gotcha. I, I, I might focus on a plastic surgeon. Mm -hmm. You know, they have certain needs and thoughts. Mm -hmm. I may focus on a pilot. They have certain needs and thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to ask myself, what kind of investments do they want? Wow. How do I find them? Mm -hmm. Where do they go? and then meet them. So I go specific to tasks, specific to people, yeah. not just a, a general, I'm raising money. Yeah, yeah. I focus on specific people. Well, well you know, yeah. I, I know one sales expert um, by the name of Jasta Karan. I think he, yeah. he, he would probably attest to that That's as well. Same thing, right? Yeah, very yeah. similar. Like just kind of like really laying out like who, what this avatar looks like? Like exactly. who is this person that you're targeting? Right? Exactly. Because not everybody, not everybody is buying your product, right? Exactly. Like if you're selling ice, Maybe right. the guy that the guy that lives in the desert wants your ice, but the Eskimo that lives up north, he's not your client. No, no, no. Right? So, yeah, yeah. That Eskimo wants sand. <laughs> he wants sand, right? Yeah. So yeah, so really kind of so what you're saying is pick pick an area, pick an area, pick a group. Pick a group. Pick a group. Define. Understand them, what mm -hmm. they want, what's yeah. their need. Yeah. What am mm -hmm. I truly trying to do? Mm -hmm. I'm truly trying to help that person mm -hmm. in their life. Yeah. And I'm gonna help myself as well. Yeah. So it's a it's a give and take. Mm -hmm. You are actually one of the professionals in this real estate investing business. And I call it a business because yes. a lot of time people think like yeah. real estate investors, they don't have skills, they don't have right. money. They just kind of come like door salesmen knocking right. on people's right. doors and asking for all these things, right? That's right. But you have to have real skills in order to run this business. Yeah. I, I know that as a fact because I, I, I spent 
like quite a bit of years in school studying a lot of this stuff. Yeah. You took a completely different path. It's right. like you just went in directly into the field and right. developed hands-on. Yeah. And then there's yet still another way, right? Mm. Like trade guys sometimes come from trades and then trades, they, they, yeah. they then develop this skill as well, right? So, I mean, there's way different paths are coming. So I do know that you are actually running some interesting training programs. I actually yes. joined you in one of your programs. I, I was blown away. Because for first of all, I was like, well, I heard you speak on different mm -hmm. different mediums. I was like, wow, this guy knows his stuff. But when I when I got there and I saw a hundred page document, and then I was like, well, this guy gotta have this this guy gotta be in this guy gotta be some sort of expert in, in like this 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 realm. Yeah. Right. And then, of course, now you're, you're doing a, this was a call. What was the name of that program? Well, that was how to build. So That's how, how to, to build. build a house. Yeah. OK. From, from A to Z. Right. And uh, so, I mean, how to build a house from A to Z. Yeah. If you guys haven't actually checked this guy. In, what's yeah. your Instagram by chance? Oh, it's, it's actually RCCSOL dot investor. RCCSOL dot investor. OK. So yeah. check him out there. You'll probably see links to his to his uh, how to build. Um, a house, it kind of gives you everything you need to how to build a house. Again, talking about small scale development. Now, there's another program which I am more interested in because right. I want to pick your brain. I want to get that booklet. Like I want to get that booklet yeah. on how to raise money, how to navigate the more business side because I know the building side. I think yes. we talked about that. But the business side, how to get money, how to structure deals and stuff. Like that's really critical. So it's important how to structure deals mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's important to... I, 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 we've talked before about this. Mm -hmm. When somebody comes to me and says to me they want me to invest, yeah, and they'll give me numbers like you know, here's your ROI, here's mm -hmm. the the cash flow, here's A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. You know what? If I'm on the tenth floor because I'm doing very well, I have money to invest. Yeah. If if mm -hmm. yeah, I never tell anybody <laughs> if I'm doing well or not. It's my personal business. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I'm on the tenth floor, I don't want to fall ten floors. So don't tell me about how much mm -hmm. money I can make. Show me how you're going to protect me liability-wise. Mm, wow. I do not want to be sued for this project. Mm. Show me the tax treatment that this product's going to have. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, you, I'm going to make a lot of money, but if I lose most of it, the taxes, doesn't make sense. Okay. Show me the systems you put in place so that things mm -hmm. are working even when you're not. Show me my exits. Mm -hmm. Now you've earned the right to now talk to me about what money I can make. Wow. So, again, it's just a different way of thinking or a different approach. But if you understand that wealthy people... Mm do not want to be poor. Mm -hmm. They are more afraid of being poor. <laughs> that's right, really. that's right. They, don't, they, care. they yeah. don't care really how much, yeah. how, much, how much the ROI is. They don't care yeah. about that. They want to know how much of that they will keep. To keep. Or <laughs> if I want to get into this, mm -hmm. why would I harm myself mm -hmm. to do something? Because in my past, I've actually invested with people. Mm -hmm. uh, I gave them the lead mm -hmm. and I ended up losing and having to carry the bag at the end. Yeah. And I said to myself, mm -hmm. I did this to help them. Yeah. I didn't have to do this. Yeah. And it hurt me. That's right. So it's important to to have a reason why I want to invest. That's right. And you, you have to convince me. You well, know? hey, I, I took a look at I took a look at the performer as well. The performer is also part of that of yes. that program and That's right. uh, it's robust. Yeah. It really does answer a lot of questions. As me as a building uh, designer, construction yeah. professional, I saw everything in there that I would actually need to know: hard costs, soft costs, assumptions, yes. and on all that it's other important. stuff. Yeah. It really does break it down, yeah. and I think it's really important that you know, you know, I I believe that having an understanding of how to read statements yes. and how to how to manipulate a performer is like a key component in structuring deals. Right, I, I, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally and, agree. And, and that is something that I, I can see a lot of people lacking. But this is something that you offer as part of that second training, or is that? It, it is, it is. Mm -hmm. it, it's more of a multifamily building, yeah. uh, how to finance and structure, how to raise money. Mm -hmm. But I will say this, though. In mm -hmm. the first How to Build workshop, yeah. you, you were yeah. an attendant, right? Mm -hmm. I got to tell you that what you brought to the table, uh, your, your understanding of the bylaws, uh, mm -hmm. because a, a few times I invited uh, Ronald up to to speak mm -hmm. because he knows what he's talking about. And I gotta tell you, your input really made that training even better. Yeah. That's just to tell you that you and I will do some trainings together. Yeah, no, I in, and in, I, in the future because I, your input is I think amazing. Yeah. Well you know? I truly appreciate that yeah. coming from you. I mean I work hard at my craft. Yeah. Uh, just like anyone that is passionate about what they do. Yeah. So you know I, I certainly appreciate that feedback for yeah. sure. Um so I mean maybe here here's what we'll do. We'll actually go into like maybe a really fun segment here. Sounds um, good. I, I, I want to call this segment, this is our inaugural episode, so this is the first time. Uh, this is our inaugural honored guest, 
Matt Fredericks, yeah, Fredericks. and you know what? I want I want to do this 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 three times questions, right? So sounds good. So let's 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 see if we can give okay. this a go here. Let's see how this goes. I'm ready. So, you ready? Okay, breathe. right. So ready. Breathe, breathe. Yeah. This one. Okay, so what advice is worth giving an investor, a real estate investor, three times or more? What advice would you give a real estate mm. investor three times or more? The most important advice. Three times or more. Let's let's hear this. One. Okay. Yeah. So people think big problems require mm -hmm. big solutions. Yeah. See, big problems don't start from big from big problems. Yeah. Big problems start from small things. Mm -hmm. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, the tap starts dripping, and then it leads to something else. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is, wow. big problems start from small things. The space shuttle exploded because of something small. <laughs> people think you have to find a big solution mm -hmm. for a big thing. Because yeah. they think it mm -hmm. must be a big solution, or else I would not, I would not be stumped. Yeah, you know, no way I could be stumped with a small solution. That's right. But you have to look for small solutions mm -hmm. that will lead to solving big problems. Mm -hmm. So that's what I keep telling myself: don't look for the big, look for the small. Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm when I'm building, I deal with the small. Mm -hmm. I talked to you about this that I think that I'm water. I think that I'm air. So if I'm air and water, and I'm looking at a building site. How does air and water mm. affect the soil? Yeah. How does air and water affect the concrete in my foundation? Envelope. How does the air and water affect my, my lumber? Mm -hmm. How does it affect my insulation? How does it mm -hmm. affect my roof? That's right. So air and water is a little thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. But it's a massive thing to making that house work or not. Wow. Just to say to you, you mm -hmm. need to understand the little things, how they, f how they work, yeah. to help you understand the big things. And I have to keep telling myself that mm -hmm. over and over again, yes. three times. Wow. Okay, you know, good, and, 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 and that's, that's really great advice because yeah. you know sometimes we we are somewhat bombarded by yeah. big flames and we're trying to out big flames, but yeah. big flames start small. Big flames start small. So if you know it'll take less effort to out those flames yeah. if you address it when they're small. So that's right. That's actually really really great advice, and yeah. that's a, that's that's the advice that you would that you would give. An investor three times. You'll keep three repeating times. that to them because right. they need to focus on the small details yes. here, right? Yeah. Okay, I, awesome. I awesome. Well, great. So this one is a little bit a little bit different here. So let's see. So three times. This is our three times three questions, times. right? Three, three times. Questions. times. What would you do, right? Okay, so let me know which so choose choose a choose a letter in the alphabet. Letter in the alphabet. Okay. Choose a letter. Which letter it is? Yeah, let's go with C. C? Okay. Choose a letter in the alphabet and give me three words that start with that letter. Oh, that wow. describes you. <laughs> okay, uh, can I change my letter? No, okay. I'm joking. Okay, okay. So, so see. Yeah. So I'll say, um, oh, character. Number one is character. Okay, got you. Have to have character, mm. and you always have to test your character. It's not a thing you have. Mm -hmm. At every level of my wealth or every level of my increase, I have to increase my character to survive that level. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is courage. I had to be courageous to do bold things that people said to me. You know what? You can't succeed at that. Mm -hmm. And number three, C would be cunning. I had to be cunning <laughs> in whatever I did in order to be able to make sure I get the, the right property, the right price. Obviously, I'm doing no harm when I say cunning. Mm -hmm. I'm not there to harm people. Yes. But I have to be cunning in what I do. I have to be nimble and cunning. Wow. So I think those three would probably be my, my three. Well, these, <laughs> these, you know, I definitely stand by character. Yeah. And character is definitely yeah. something that, you know, this has to do a lot with integrity as integrity well. Integrity is important. Right. Yeah. Really, really stay sticking to your word and so yeah. forth. Um, courage. Courage. Courage, I think every entrepreneur. Yeah. I'll say this. I respect every <laughs> single business person that started yeah. a business mm -hmm. and remains in business for greater than three years. Yeah. Maybe, you know, there's all these statistics that if the business doesn't last more than five years, yeah. That it, it is, you know, it, it's not really considered to be established, but yeah. the truth is, three years to me, the person is established yeah. in terms of courage, being underst understanding how to go through some stuff yeah. and just stick to itness, right? Right. Like I, so, having that courage, I think, is important because following courage comes capability. Capability, right? Yes, and it's true. like once you get through that whole yeah. fear of doing something, then that capability comes, and then you can repeat that. Right? I, I will say one thing, going mm -hmm. back to character. Yeah. If you fail at character, it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that you're a bad person and the world mm -hmm. is over. Wow. Right? Yeah. I failed in character in certain areas of my life. Mm -hmm. And I caught it. Yes. I forgave myself for it. Mm -hmm. I caught it. Wow. I made sure I said, okay, you know what? Mm -hmm. How do I make it even? Uh, how do I forgive myself for it? How do I get forgiven? How do I go to the back of the line? How do I work my way up again? Because mm -hmm. some people, they make a character mistake. 
-hmm. and then they hold it against themselves forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're not perfect. Yeah. And character is a thing that you have to develop. Wow. So again, I've messed up in my life. Yeah. I'm not perfect. Wow. But uh, you have to forgive yourself and make things even mm -hmm. and then move on. Wow. Right? Uh, I got to tell you, man, yeah. you touched my heart with that yeah. one, you know, oh, wow. yeah. because we're, we're always, we're all in a, like when you're doing business yeah. or even when you're just going through life, yeah. like you will falter in character in some areas yes but you won't you won't you won't meet everybody definition of character that's right right so and but you can't beat yourself up no you, you have can't. to be able to forgive yourself first that's right and then you can you know because really it's kind of like you know, it's, that's like drinking poison right, right. That, it, it is it's like drinking poison, poison in your body yeah. in, in for, for your own body right so yeah being yeah. able to forgive yourself absolutely agree with that and yeah. Cunning. Wow, that's that's interesting. Gotta be cunning. Kind of like a fox. Like, you know, I never yeah. heard that term to describe somebody <laughs> cunning. I don't know if a fox is a fox cunning. I don't know what describes a fox. It is me. actually yeah. a, a fox. Listen, a fox is cunning yeah. and a lion has courage. So you have to be both. <laughs> that's right? it. And a tiger has character. That's so great. You ultimately, that? you have to be all three. Amazing. So a tiger is sovereign. Mm -hmm. You know, a lion is character, works wow. within its group. And a fox works alone. Mm -hmm. It has to be. Ingenious. That's actually, yeah. that's a good point. So, a fox does work. So, you know, yeah. it's funny you brought this up because I actually love geographic, ge geograph yeah. um, like geographics, right? Yeah. Like, so there's a, like lines and like, so I'm a big, I'm a big yeah. fan of the domains. Let's domains, call it yeah. that, right? Yeah. The air, the sea, I even yeah. add the river in there, right? I add the land because, you know, yeah. they say like, they say like the lion is the king of the jungle. Well, that's yeah. not the lion, that's no. the ape. The ape might be the king of the jungle. Maybe yeah. I think an ape. Um, the lion is really the king of the savanna. That's right. Right? That's like right. really, that's where the lion, that's the lion's domain. Right. Okay, different topic, but yeah. I, I love that stuff. I actually compare myself a lot with animals, you know, like yeah. look at a river, you look at an alligator. Yeah. That's the king of the river, yeah. right? The swamplands, right? That's true. So, um, yeah, okay, let's get back to our four C's here. We sure, digress sure. here, right? right? right, right. Um, okay, so this one is, is, is kind of interesting. I, I really want to know this myself because I also have my list, mm -hmm. but, um, what movie or book do you watch more than three times or three times questions? Okay. So which 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 movie or books mm -hmm. do you watch more than three times a year or since it actually was released? If I think back to movies, mm -hmm. uh, there was a movie called Troy with oh, oh, Brad Pitt. Oh, oh, yes. And it starts <laughs> off and it talks about yeah. men. Mm -hmm. Uh, over time, yeah. we want to know that we were remembered. So men mm -hmm. meaning women as well, right? Yes, that's right, yeah. And we ask ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, will they know who we, how we loved, how we fought, yeah. what we did. Mm -hmm. uh, it's legacy. important to leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. So I like yes. that aspect mm -hmm. of Troy because of the legacy. Yeah, yeah. I liked um, the, the movie with um, Gladiator. I like Gladiator. Oh, you, you're my kind of guy, my yeah. friend. I'm tell you why I like yeah. Gladiator. <laughs> at one <laughs> point, Maximus. <laughs> Maximus. At one point, uh, I guess uh, the person in charge of the Gladiators yeah. is saying to Maximus, listen, I wasn't famous yeah. because I killed fast. Mm. I was famous because I won the crowd. Mm -hmm. Win the crowd, you'll win your freedom. Mm. So sometimes people do things, you know, because they want to just show how great they are. Mm -hmm. It's not about how great you are. Mm -hmm. You got to win the crowd. You win the crowd, entertain the crowd, mm -hmm. you entertain your freedom. Wow. So that's important. Wow. And I liked the uh, last one, City of Angels, mm. with um, uh, Meg Ryan and... Uh, I forget, the, I forget the, the person who was the angel, mm -hmm. but at some point he was on top of the building and he had to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Do I stop being an angel? Do I fall off this building and become a human again? Mm. And he said that in becoming a human, oh yeah, you feel pain. But if you feel pain, you also feel love. Mm. So if wow. he was an angel, some and deep it's stuff a movie there. of course, but if he's an angel, he never would have felt the the taste of food, the yeah. pain and the love, we yeah. require it. So I'm okay with pain. Wow. Because it juxtapositions, mm. it juxtapositions it love. Love, okay, got you. Got if you, you don't feel pain, you won't feel love. Mm. So I would say those three movies are probably for me. Wow, those, that's, those yeah. are deep, my friend. Like yeah. you, you actually, yeah, you watch those shows. Like um, I watched them a few I'll times. I'll tell you, like, uh, you know, <laughs> so I actually like that genre of movies. Yeah. Those, uh, those, those, anything that has, a, like has swords, yeah. shields, axes, <laughs> Or, or bows, yeah, um, yeah catapults. Yeah. Like <laughs> you, <laughs> you get me in on those movies. I love it. Like my yeah. favorite of all time would be Sparta. Right? Oh, I, I love that movie. Yeah, um, yeah. so uh, Spartans, what do you do? Oh my gosh, That's love right. it. I just love the role of the of, of the army. You know, so yeah. um, really, really awesome. Hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. 
hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely big on that. Yeah. So that kind of brings us to the end of our yeah. of our three three point questions. Now, I'll just ask you: Is there anything else that we missed here that you might want to add? Like in terms of what would be some some final points that you might want to just leave a, a listener here on yeah. small scale development. I would say that a lot of people want to improve themselves, so they mm -hmm. end up reading lots of books, mm -hmm. right? And they might read like you know forty books in a year. <laughs> What I would say to them, you know, read one book in January, mm -hmm. take five things from it, spend February incorporating that in your life, and make March it be your behavior. So I'd rather take four points from a book, it be, be, become a behavior by March, and then I read a second book, mm -hmm. do the same thing, third and fourth. So I'd mm -hmm. rather read four books a year, pick up 20 behaviors that I learned from the books. Mm -hmm. You'll be more successful living living the point as opposed to reading a thousand books mm -hmm. and being just book smart yeah right so yes, i think yes. people should apply what they learn that's right if you listening to if you listen to us today yeah and there's something that ronald or myself said mm -hmm. you need to take that yes. and apply it in your life absolutely and that's where mm -hmm. uh this becomes very powerful absolutely you know? I, I do agree with that you know yeah. take taking action taking action action you know like they say knowledge is the what no, knowledge is power knowledge is power Knowledge is really not power. <laughs> like it's the application of knowledge. Application is power. of knowledge, is, yeah. Right. So really, what you're saying is essentially read the book. Yes. Take the advice from the book. Yes. And apply it. Right. To get some result. Exactly. Then read another book. <laughs> right. So even right. if you get don't read forty books. That's at right. One time. <laughs> Five results that you yeah. live mm -hmm. are better than a thousand results that you know. Okay, great. Right. Well, so I want to leave you guys with a quote. I think it's a really interesting quote for real estate developments, but uh, real estate developers, but overall, just people in general, right? And um, do you have do you have twenty dollars or five dollars, ten dollars, uh, any any on, any sum on. of money? I might have I mean, my lunch money. Hold on. Okay. Oh, there. There. This is not in, this is not enough for the lunch for two. <laughs> okay, so it's for this, parking. It's, <laughs> okay, good. So this is a Canadian ten dollar bill. Um, you know, you, you're from the Caribbean, so you know the Caribbean, we actually tear, tear. money, and <laughs> you'll see some money with actual tape, tape yeah. holding it together, and that money actually, is that money valuable still or not? It's still valuable. It's still a $10 bill, even yeah. if it's split in half and it's yeah. held together with tape. It's completely valuable. Absolutely. So I want to leave you guys with this quote here, and um, you know, it says like, dirty or clean, crusty or ill-looking, you're still worth much to those that love you. You still would much to those that love you. And I want to kind of give a little a little example here. Like this for this $10 bill here, right? If you take this $10 bill and fold it, is the value now split in half? No. Nope. No, it's, it's still $10. If you, you give it even a foot of fold and you crumple it up, sorry, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna ruin this. This is gonna have to go in the garbage after, right? Because I just crumpled this up. Like this, this $10 bill is now worth less now. Is that true? I can handle it, yeah. You can handle You still want to $10 bill back? I can handle it. Yeah, okay. So even though I crumple this up, it's still worth $10. And that leads me to my final piece here, you know? Like, basically, it doesn't matter what it is you do or who it is you know. You are worth what you are. And your value is never diminished based on things that you go through. So keep that as my final closing thought. So I want to thank you guys for listening to this episode of our inaugural sweet spot podcast and please feel free to subscribe to this and look forward to many more to come in the very near future again thank you very much matthew thank you for inviting me